Yo, what is going on YouTube? It's your boy Dan, aka Drive. I'm bringing you guys a brand new video today. Today we're going to be talking about Pokemon Sword and Shield and some new rumors that have surfaced that point some directions towards the new Pokedex, what Pokemon are going to be in the Galar region, as well as some storyline elements. This is a rumor video, so none of this has been proven true. However, uh, it is very interesting to discuss, and there could be some spoilers ahead, so just kind of an FYI. But before I jump into that, I just wanted to touch on Janichi Masuda and Pokemon Company's statement regarding the national decks for those who aren't aware during e3 they indicated that there is going to be a limitation to the amount of Pokemon that are gonna be in the Galar region and ultimately that created a lot of backlash amongst fans bringing back the national decks hashtag hashtag bring back the national decks and hashtag bring the national decks back or whatever the other hashtag was man but people were basically riding over the fact that the game isn't gonna have every single Pokemon in it I was very upset myself at first, but I've kind of just kind of gotten over it because I still think the game is going to be good and I'm not really going to, you know, spend too much time worrying about it. But I said, you know what, I'm going to make some jokes about it from here and there on Twitter and I'll just let the rest of Twitter kind of go after whoever. I think it's gotten a little out of hand, but nevertheless, they issued a statement and that statement was actually kind of funny. It said, thank you to our fans for caring so deeply about Pokemon. I read your comments, yada, yada, yada. We're passionate about Pokemon. I like to make one thing clear, even if it's not in Sword and Shield, that doesn't mean it's not going to appear in future games. And they basically are going to just, I'll just summarize for you, they're sticking to their guns. They are not going to have every single Pokemon in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Now my understanding is this is not that hard for them to do. Uh, a lot of the assets and everything are being reused, so it's not impossible. I don't necessarily chalk it up to a time restriction, although that could be part of it. Um, it may be a factor because I cannot delay the release of this game other games can be pushed back But this is not a game that can get pushed back uh, You have to realize there's so many moving pieces with Pokemon from the anime to the merch to the movies to the TCG Etc, etc. So they're not pushing it back. But anyway, uh, it's a pretty interesting stuff there So they're gonna hold their stance They're gonna stick to what they said and my gut when I originally the first thing I thought of when I heard that they were limiting the decks was that there's a really good chance that we're gonna get Diamond Pearl Platinum Sinnoh remakes next year and that will be the rest of the deck so if this deck seems to be a little bit short of Gen 4 Pokemon that may be a reason why but anyway I just want to talk about this a lot of people have been asking me my thoughts on it kind of my thought is honestly at this point there's no point in bringing your hashtags and all that stuff and rioting because they're not changing anything if you don't want to get the game don't get the game if you're gonna get the game anyway like me then we'll continue on with our lives it is what it is it stinks I'm not saying it doesn't stink and you're welcome to voice your opinions but at this point, I don't think anything's going to get done. The only way you can prove your real point that you really are against this is show with your wallet. Don't buy the game. Anyway, moving on. I passed across this uh, this post on Twitter this morning. I thought it was pretty interesting. So we're going to kind of dive into it here. Uh, this is actually the 4chan. Or I'm sorry, not the 4chan. The GameFAQs post. Uh, pretty interesting stuff here. So uh, let's talk about it. Let's jump into this rumor again. Everything in this video from this point forward is uh, rumor, speculation. Nothing here confirmed to be true. However, I am going to be referencing, and this seems to reference a leak that came out right before E3 and right before the Pokemon Direct. We've talked about it a number of times. If you're not familiar with that leak, go check out some of my other videos. But basically, this leak has called a lot of things. So a lot of these things in this video are going to tie directly back into that leak. So let's jump into it. Hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys are new. And let's go. Let's do it. Let me know your thoughts on the National Dex thing, too. Let me know in the comments, because that's been a really hot topic. But anyway, here we go. Uh, I couldn't post this on 4chan, because some other person seems to have my P and got me banned, so I made a throwaway. Yada, yada, yada. Uh, a lot of this stuff is risky for leaking on my own accounts. It could come back to me. I'm an English tester for Sword and Shield. That's all I can reveal. Okay, so I honestly, anytime a leaker is just like, oh, I don't want to get in trouble for the leak, I generally feel like that's a little weird, in my opinion, but... We shall proceed. There are 104 new Pokemon. Galar forms are in. Like the other leak implied, Meowth and Surfetch is actually a Galar form. Doesn't use that name, but the leaker may have called it that to paint a picture of its design. Its leak is treated more like a cane and it has a color swap. So this is saying that Surfetch is a Galar form, not necessarily an evolution of Farfetch. Um, and that it's got a little bit of a different design. So that kind of contradicts some other things we've talked about, but this time representation is scattered among all past region Pokemon Unlike with Alolan Pokemon just being Kanto. So this is saying if you guys remember the Alolan Pokemon Alolan Executor, Alolan Raichu, you know Alolan Diglett, those were all Kanto Pokemon This is now saying that there's gonna be Galarian Pokemon or Galar forms, but they actually can be any generation All right examples like the Gulpin line. They look more like sweets the Dwebble line. They look more grassy and green the majority of Kanto Pokemon are going to return though. There's going to be a strong representation from the other regions. 
though less than Kanto. This is pretty believable. Um, this could also just be a guess, but this is very believable in the sense that obviously uh, Kanto is going to have a very big representation in this game because they always kind of cater to Kanto and you might be like, I hate it. There's so much, but they got to make money, you know, they got to do what's going to be good for the game. So maybe not for the fans, but good for the game. So anyway, totaling uh, about 600 Pokemon, uh, which honestly, this is a really good number. If this is the truth, then this is a really good number because we're sitting at eight something, right? So throw another hundred in there. You look at like 900 and something. So to get 600, that's actually really good, man. Considering probably 50 of the ones missing are legendaries and whatever else. It's not bad. That's really not bad. If you, uh, my thought is on the minimum end of the decks, talk, and this is why I wanted to talk about the national deck stuff beforehand. On the minimum side of the decks, I'm thinking 400 is the absolute minimum. My gut says five or 600 though. That's just that's just my guess because the Ultra Sun and Moon decks was 400. The Sun and Moon decks was 300, right? So it's unlikely that they're any smaller than that. It's probably going to be probably between four and 600. My guess is 400 minimum, 600 on the higher end. I don't think it'll be seven or 800 because at that point, why not just have everything? That's kind of my thoughts. Anyway, uh, many will only be acquired through events and max raid battles that get rot rotated around. This is a rumor that's kind of spread a bunch uh, and definitely something I do hope they implement because I think it makes a lot of sense to have these max raid battles and events. You can have the max raid battles change every two weeks or every month or whatever. Could be really cool. It's something they do in Pokemon Go. They can actually link up the raid battles in Sword and Shield with the raid battles in Pokemon Go and put different legendaries into the game through that so maybe maybe that's their master plan the game starts with x amount of pokemon but maybe they're gonna bring in you know different raid pokemon through the dynamax or the max raid battles in the wild area like those are things that could happen anyway dynamax levels only increase total pokemon's health and go up to level 10 at level 10 some pokemon gain new gigantamax forms so there is um so we do know that it just increases the total health so that's nothing new uh, Dynamaxing just increases the HP stat, not the other stats, but obviously the moves are stronger. And then this is not saying level 10 for like your Grookey's level 10. This is saying your Dynamax level can go up to level 10. And we have seen from screenshots and gameplay footage that there is like a Dynamax level, um, but we don't really know too much about that yet. So this is saying that I can go up to level 10 and then when you hit a certain time, like a certain level at level 10, some Pokemon can get the Gigantamaxing, which is a different form of uh, Dynamaxing, which changes their appearance. Perhaps the more you Dynamax that particular Pokemon, the more their level goes up. I don't know. Squovet is the standard rodent you'll find mostly in the early routes. So Squovet is from a previous leak. This is what we think is going to be the little chipmunk Pokemon. Low Finch is the standard bird you'll find in the early routes as well, based on the Goldfinch with a love theme. So this is something totally new that we haven't heard of yet. Wulu evolves into Puffluff. Its wool gets even larger, but it looks more adult-like in its features. So that's new. Raboot's evolution is called Athlabit, and it will be firefighting based on an athlete. So Raboot is supposed to be the evolved form of Scorbunny, and it's saying that it's going to evolve into Athlabit, which is a fire and fighting starter. Uh, <laughs> I just, I feel like I, I can see people looking at this video right now and them cho choking and hoping that that's not the case. It's been a while, dude. Gen 5 was the last firefighting, so, you know, I don't, th I genuinely don't feel like the starter is going to be firefighting, though. I don't. I don't think it's going to be firefighting. I don't, but maybe it will. I don't know. Grookey evolves into Drew Monkey, and then Drew Monkey evolves into Bongorilla. Dude, if this is real, these game these names are phenomenal, by the way. Beats a drum to fight. It's grass and rock type. This kind of lines up with a couple of the different uh, rumors that we've seen so far. But uh, Grookey evolving into Drew Monkey, and then Bongorilla. I love that name, Bongorilla. That's such a good name. Anyway, Sizzle and Inteleon leaks are correct. Inteleon is Water Ghost. So this is the evolved form of Sobble evolving into Sizzle. Or Sizzile and Inteleon, which is the fact that Sobble is supposed to get some sort of a spy type theme. Zamazenta is pure steel and Zacian is pure fighting. Okay. Eternatus, which is supposed to be the third legendary, is pure dark. You'll encounter these legends in the story behind them after the seventh gym. Team Yell, which is supposed to be the evil team, don't know much about their leaders. They just go around causing ruckuses and interfere with Pokemon battles and larger events. They're frequently mentioned as troublemakers on television and in locals uh, by in various cities and towns. Their main objective seems to be simple and harmless compared to previous teams, but the leaders are actually using the grunts to distract away from their operations. They're researching how to control Eternatus in order to defeat Sacian and Zamazenta, the two guardians of the Gala region, and then ultimately take over the region. So that, that's pretty feasible. I would say that this whole thing here, that, that would actually make sense, right? So the Team Yell grunts, they just kind of, they just kind of heckle. They just kind of, you know, they're just kind of annoying. You know, they just kind of mess with the people who are doing the little stadiums and stuff. 
but ultimately the dudes at the top of team yell are really they're like deep down they're just you know they have some secret plans which kind of kind of aligns uh, i think that could make some sense so here's the gym types you got milo which is grass water which is nessa we know those kabu is ground fairy uh is opal fighting is penny dark is jora steel is darren and normal is lena so this is saying that these are all the types for the gym leaders now we know about milo and water and nessa some of these names are coming from a different leak um the one we talked about that we're assuming is true the normal gym is directly in front of the elite four but it isn't a public stadium like the other seven the elite four which is weird by the way the elite four reception is the first thing you see when you walk in with the gym being accessible by entering a different room once you beat it leon congratulates you and lets you know he's waiting on the top of the tower it is weird to me uh just saying to kind of play devil's advocate or you know go against what this is saying it's very weird to me that you would battle the last gym and then jump right in the lead four that seems weird to me because usually there's some sort of conclusion of plot elements unless after the seventh gym is the entire plot I i'm gonna just say like as a skeptic um you know we always go into these rumors with um with you know take it with a grain of salt right but to me it's weird that you don't find the story until after the seventh gym and then you're just gonna battle the eighth gym and then i mean it's possible that the whole main story is tucked into that one little area and it leads up through team yell but that seems a little weird to me but you know maybe i'm misunderstanding the elude four system has changed to be more like the battle frontier i could believe that after clearing the normal gym your badgering is completed and you're able to challenge the elite four by speaking to a receptionist in the previous room before you challenge lena each member is in a different building with a different kind of challenge you can challenge the first three in any order enya is ghost Lyric is flying and Colt. So actually as a ch chat out that can Gigantamax apparently and Colt is in the red building to the right, which is bug. I would love a bug type elite four member, please. Then you can go back to the building that holds Lena's gym. There's a guard standing in front that leads you to a different tower. You get to the access to the base of the tower, which is the fourth member Claude, which is psychic. And then after you beat them, you can take the elevator to the top where you battle Leon, who has a Gigantamax form Charizard. Okay, so you can battle three of them in any order. Then you have to battle the fourth one, which is the psychic one. And then you battle the champion, which is Leon. Becoming champion unlocks some of the cities surrounding the Elite Four. You can explore it, but it's not as big as it looks on the map. It's post-game content with some, uh, some battle facilities, markets, TMs, etc. More Pokemon will spawn in the wild area. I believe that. There's also a battle tower system uh, in the center of the map in the industrial city. There's also a city for the seventh gym, which is Steel. Uh, however, it's locked before you can challenge it for a while. So I guess the seventh gym is in the middle, which is like that industrial city in the middle, uh, which I, I, I could believe. And then the wild area looks a lot better in the playtest build. They had to crunch for the most stable version for E3. The notorious tree has better textures. I can't say any more. Posting this is already risky. So that's that, man. That's the thoughts. My thoughts on this, man, is I feel like this dude took a lot of information from previous leaks and kind of came to this. I'm having a hard time thinking that this is ultimately going to be real, um, but definitely some interesting stuff. I definitely thought it was worth talking about because there are some parts in here that make me say, okay, you know, like when I see stuff like this, this seems really f like f feasible. Um, but again, kind of ties into a lot of things we've seen before. So I'll pass the ball to you guys. What do you guys think? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Real, fake, what do you want? But let me know your national decks thoughts because I really wanted to talk about that, but I didn't want to dedicate a whole video to it. So. That's that for me, guys. Hit that like button, subscribe if you guys are new, and I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.